Hello, everybody, and welcome to MME 2305, Material and Energy Balances. Um, I'm the professor, D.A. Robertson. I can be reached at droberson at utep.edu. Uh, today, uh, we're continuing our talk about our, our lectures about um, reactive energy balances. And uh, today, we're going to talk specifically about, uh-oh, Reactive energy balances at elevated temperatures. Ah, why? Ah. We're going to take a look at this problem and we're going to calculate the heat of reaction at 900 Kelvin for a lead oxide. So we're reacting it with carbon monoxide to get pure lead and uh, carbon dioxide is the balanced equation. Um, we kind of caring about the states, so uh, crystal, so I use crystal and solid interchangeably, um, gas, liquid, and gas um, at 900 K. And there's kind of two ways to calculate this problem, and uh, we're going to work it out the long way first, uh, where we calculate the heat of a reaction at SDP, and to do that, we have to take the reactants uh, to SDP and then raise the products to the given temperature. And again, I remember doing this a uh, long, long time ago. Um, it'll look kind of something like this where we diagram it out. And uh, so we're going to uh, lower the reactants to room temperature, calculate the heat of reaction, and then we're going to raise the products to the elevated temperature of 900 Kelvin. And uh, so we pay attention to the arrows. Um, this is going from hot to cold, so that means this is going to have a negative sign associated with it. And this is going to have a positive sign associated with it. Why? Because you're going to be using sensible heats uh, for this part. Uh, to calculate the heat of reaction, we're of course going to be using the uh, heats of formation. And uh, so delta H1, delta H2 um, are the sensible heats of a lowering a lead oxide from 900 to 298K and carbon dioxide from 900 to 298K respectively. Um, delta H4 and delta H5 are the sensible heats of raising lead from uh, 298K to 900K and carbon dioxide from 298K to 900K. Um, I haven't left out delta H3. That's the heat of reaction at 298K uh, following Hess's law. And for that, of course, we're going to use the heats of formation. Um, here are the tables uh, that we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using the heat of formation at room temperature. And uh, for um, our constituents here, our components, uh, we also want to use the sensible heats at 900 Kelvin um, for everything involved in the chemical reaction. And so I kind of highlighted the critical values and uh, we'll work through this problem shortly. I'm going to show you the other set of tables and point something out. Um, here again, the critical values. Um, this is pretty uh, interesting and I'll point out some, uh, I guess, nuances to using these tables. We're using the lead liquid table and uh, lead should not be a liquid at room temperature. So in this case, it gives you a heat of formation that's not zero. And in most cases, when we're dealing with just elements, um, we have a heat of formation of zero. And we'll go through uh, this version and we'll go through the other table, which has the heat of formation as, as uh, zero uh, for liquid lead. But on this table, the liquid table has a heat of formation of 3740 uh, joules per mole for liquid lead at room temperature. Um, we're also going to be using the sensible heat at 900 Kelvin um, as well for uh, both of our um, what are these products, excuse me, most of the products and uh, heat of formation as well, room temperature. So remember, we're doing a cycle. We're going from 900 to 298 to calculate the heat of reaction. Then we're going to raise the products from 298 to 900, add them all together, and get an answer. I'm just going to point out again that we're using the liquid table. All right, so we're going to uh, work out this problem uh, where we calculate the heat of reaction uh, for this um, lead oxide refining problem where we're combining lead oxide with carbon monoxide and we're getting pure lead and uh, carbon dioxide. 
and uh, we pay attention to the um, states here. And uh, I'll point out some interesting things um, with the table. Um, again, this is using the, the um, freed Excel tool um, that I posted on Blackboard. Um, we saw digital versions of the tables um, in the previous sequence. And uh, so we'll kind of strategize uh, what we're going to do in this problem. And uh, so one way to do it, and I remember learning this in like high school chemistry, um, is you take the, excuse me, you take the um, reactants, excuse me, I couldn't think of the word. You take the reactants uh, from 900 degrees to 298 Kelvin, and uh, you have the heat enthalpy change, which is a sensible heat. Um, you then calculate the heat of reaction at um, room temperature, 298K, and then you take the products and use the sensible heat change, uh, raising that from um, 298K to 900K. And I mapped it out digitally, um, but we can do it again. Um, we have delta H1, delta H2, and I'm making a mess of it. Um, delta H3 is the heat of reaction at room temperature. Um, delta H4 and delta H5. And these arrows are helpful, and it's helpful if you diagram out a problem like this, uh, simply because um, you can pay attention to the sign. And um, so if we're going from 900K to 298K, you know it's gonna be negative because you're cooling. If we go from um, 298K to 900K, you know it's gonna be positive because we're heating. And uh, so we'll, we'll work through that right now. And so I'm gonna set this off to the side and I'll bring it back in uh, to the video for reference. Um, delta H1, um, this one is cooling um, lead oxide from 900 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin. I have uh, the table here, and um, you have the digital version, and then you can kind of make your own um, if you wish to follow along. But the um, heat, uh, or sensible heat, excuse me, is uh, 112,531 uh, joules per mole. And we're cooling it, so delta H1 is um, negative, and I'll put an arrow here, negative uh, 112,531 joules per mole. Delta H2, um, we have our carbon monoxide table. And uh, let me just kind of bring back our little map. So delta H2, we're cooling um, carbon monoxide from 900 to 298. So we know the sign is going to be negative. And we also know from the chemical equation that we have to multiply our value by 4. That's a big, big deal. And um, so delta H2 is four times negative, and look at the value here, 900 Kelvin, 18402, so 18,402 joules per mole, and so 18402 and joules per mole. Um, delta H3, is the heat of reaction. And it's the sum of delta H products and heat of formation, sorry, delta, the heat of formation of products minus the heat of formation of the reactants. And it's a little messy, but products minus reactants, Hess's law. Um, hopefully you all are um, old hands at this. And uh, I showed on the digital version um, that I'm using the uh, lead table and we're, con we're considering um, something different here. And then I'll show you something else that's actually kind of cool because usually we said elements have a heat of formation of zero. 
This is the liquid lead. So it assumes we were at a liquid state. So it assumes we were at a, 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 um, a temperature. And so this is assuming super cool liquid, right? And so by convention, we typically take the heat of formation of our elements to be zero. And um, I'll show you another table where it shows up as zero, but I kind of wanted to show you that um, this table is a little different. It's the liquid table. You actually get a heat of formation for liquid lead um, at room temperature because it really shouldn't be liquid at room temperature. Um, what's interesting is the sensible heat values on this table for liquid lead are different at the same temperature than the other table um, we'll take another look at. And uh, but you get the same answer. Okay, so you can use um, the standard state table where it shows zero, or you can use this table um, where it doesn't show zero for liquid um, at room temperature. And um, you get the same answer. And I think by convention, it's more proper to say the heat of formation of zero, but I was paying attention to the states here, okay? So I'm using the liquid table, but you get the same answer if you, if you don't use the liquid table, and I'll, I'll show you that. Um, but we're going to calculate the heat of reaction anyway, and I'm going to use these tables. Uh, products minus reactants, I invite you to, to try it again yourself in the other table. I'm just going to show you uh, the result um, shortly. So products minus reactants, um, the products are lead. And so here, again, this is a little bit different than standard because we do have a heat of formation for lead. Um, so we know from our equation that we have to multiply three times uh, 3740 joules per mole. And then we wanna add um, the carbon monoxide. So four, and the heat of formation for carbon monoxide is negative 393508. So this is the products, and then we're going to subtract the reactants. And uh, I'll alter this just a little bit so you can kind of follow along. So products, and then we're going to subtract the reactants. And uh, the reactants are um, lead oxide and carbon monoxide. And so for lead oxide, um, we have... Long, I, I, I sometimes pick the wrong value, it's embarrassing. So 718686, negative, negative 718686. So negative 718686. Um, and this should be joules, joules per mole. Um, our reaction tells us carbon monoxide is four. So four times carbon monoxide, the heat of formation is 110530. So products minus reactants. So delta H. Three is equal to one thing important I guess is that this is negative. Let's check that right there. I'm going to show you again. So this is CO and this is uh, lead oxide, so this should be negative. And so that makes a big difference in the calculation there. So negative one one zero five three zero. My bad. All right, when I plug the numbers in correctly with a negative sign, I get negative, um, I get negative 405 or 405,462 joules per mole. Um, delta H4 now, delta H4 is raising lead, so it's a sensible heat, um, lead from 298 to 900, it's going to be a positive value. 
and it's also going to have an integer of 3, so we're going to multiply a multiple factor of 3. Um, so delta H4 equals 3 times 18536. Um, 3 times 536 joules per mole. And I got that off of here. So the sensible heat at 900, uh, 18536 joules per mole. And our final delta H is delta H5. And that's equal to um, raising our CO2 from 298 to 900 Kelvin. And so CO2. Our sensible heat of CO2 is on this column here, 28046. And that's going to have um, a multiple of four attached to it. Four times 28046. I tried to edit out some bloopers there. So delta H1 is uh, 112, 531 joules per mole negative. Um, delta H2 is negative uh, 73,608 joules per mole. Uh, delta H3 was the heat of reaction, and we calculated that heat of reaction specifically at room temperature. Okay, um, so we calculated that to be negative 405,462 joules per mole. Uh, delta H4, um, I worked it out once and I think I got it wrong, so I had 55,608 joules per mole, and delta H5 is 112,000. 184 joules per mole. And uh, so the delta H of reaction at, um, sorry, of this equation um, equals delta H total, and that's all of these. I'm just summing the delta H's. Um, I will say I. Okay. Kind of fudging this up a little bit. My bad. Um, if I add them all together, okay, I was trying to be fancy with my math and I messed up a little bit, but it's the sum of all the delta H's. Um, I, or n equals 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're adding them all up. And, uh, I got, if you add them all up, I got um, 423809 joules per mole. So I'll show you the other table, but you end up with pretty much the same answer as this. All right, so here's kind of the um, chicken scratch stuff for working out this problem doing the cyclic way. Um, I did it again with the CLG table, and if you notice um, that there's no heat of formation. This is a standard state, but the sensible heat at um, 900 Kelvin is a bit different than the other one. Um, than the liquid table, uh, when you work it out, you get um, um, pretty close to the same answer. So negative 423, 845 joules per mole for this one. Uh, working it out the other way, um, we got um, 423,809. So this was actually even closer um, than uh, working it out um, the other way, which you're going to see. All right, so we just worked through uh, solving this, calculating the heat of reaction for this uh, reaction that occurs at 900K by kind of going through a cyclic process. Um, the simpler way to do it is if you have the values, if you happen to have the information given, uh, which in this case would be the heat of formation for all of our components um, at the given temperature, in this case 900K, you can just simply work it out by applying Hess's law at that temperature. So if we take a look at the tables again, um, these are the, the values that we care about this time are heats of formation 
at uh, 900 Kelvin for um, um, our lead oxide, our carbon monoxide, as well as our lead and uh, carbon dioxide. And in this case, there's no uh, debate as to which uh, table we use. And because uh, the heat information is going to be zero for lead anyway, you don't care about sensible heat at all um, because you're not doing a cyclic process. All right, so we're going to take another look at this reaction. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're not going to deal with a delta H1. We're not going to deal with a delta H2. We're not going to deal with a delta H4. And we're not going to deal with a delta H5. Um, we are going to deal with delta H3. And in this case, it's going to be our only delta H. But it's not going to be the heat of reaction at room temperature. Delta H is the heat of reaction at 900 K. And we can do that because we have the heat of formation of all these things at 900 K. We also have the heat of formation of all these things, all these products and reactants in the correct state. So there's no debate. So I showed you that using um, the, the standard state table for lead didn't change the answer. Uh, very much. It was, it was within a few, a few numbers, it was within a very few joules. And that was because it had a different sensible heat value. Um, it kind of took into account the differences or the difference uh, with this heat of formation. It actually was pretty elegant. I, I, I was impressed uh, when I worked it out, actually. Um, so now we're going to take the heat of reaction using Hess's law, which we're all very, very familiar with. Uh, but we're going to use the heat of formation values at 900 Kelvin for all of our um, I guess compounds in this in this reaction, and uh, so it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Only one delta H, and uh, we're going to have uh, products minus reactants, and hopefully I can draw it right this time. Um, so heat of reaction is the heat of formation. Uh, come on, I'm drawing it wrong. Heat of formation of products minus the sum of the heat of formation, and I should be putting a delta here, I'm sorry, of the reactants. Okay, so products minus reactions, Hess's law, uh, we've seen it before. Um, our products are lead and carbon dioxide, and we've seen this type of problem worked out before. But now we're happy because we're doing things at a temperature, we don't have to go through all this cycle business because now we only have one calculation to worry about. And uh, so it's a little bit quicker to solve. Um, there's no debate with the table at all because the heat of formation is zero on both tables. And it's zero uh, for lead in the liquid state here um, because it's, it assumes to this table, liquid is the standard state is uh, basically um, the uh, my kind of hand waving answer. Ooh. Okay, um, so products minus reactants, so three times zero for lead plus, um, what else did we have? We had CO2, and I'll, I'll kind of went a little fast there, CO2 in our products. Um, so the heat of formation of CO2 at 900 Kelvin is a negative 3, 9, 3, 9, 4, 3, 7, 2. Hopefully you, you caught my mistake. I didn't multiply it by four. Four times negative three nine four three seven two. So this is products, and I'm going to subtract the reactants. And um, let me mark it with my red pen. And then minus the reactants. Minus um, the heat of formation for jumbled up in my own my own things uh, for lead oxide. I guess it's a red lead oxide. That's that's a nice uh, touch there. Can I have that? 
uh, negative uh, 700,000, um, 711442, for whatever reason I can't see, properly say numbers today. Um, and there's only one lead, so we don't have to multiply it by anything. So, negative 711442. add our carbon monoxide this time. And we're going to have to multiply that by 4. So carbon monoxide, heat of formation of carbon monoxide at 900 Kelvin is 111414. And all this is joules per mole. Okay, so you know, I'm being sloppy with my units. Don't add any fusion to that. All right, so I work this one out and I get negative 420, 390 joules per mole. And um, this is what I got when I worked it out. One thing that kind of uh, bugs me a little bit is about 3,000 joules off of um, working it out with either table. And here the that lead table didn't, didn't make anything, um, make any difference because the heat information was zero for lead. But anyway, this is what I got. Uh, work it out um, with, on your own and see if you get the same or close to answer. I will say that it's not an order of magnitude different. And uh, so it's pretty close. And uh, so we have to accept uh, this one's close enough. All right, we're going to take a look at another example problem, and uh, this is uh, kind of a kind of a real problem when you start scaling things up, and uh, when you start actually making stuff uh, based on chemical reactions, uh, which happens a lot in the real world. And uh, so let's look at this example example uh, problem. Uh, you work in a plant uh, which makes silicon tetrachloride. Um, in this plant, solid silicon is reacted with chlorine gas at uh, 800 Kelvin, so we have an elevated temperature um, problem we're dealing with. Uh, to reduce silicon tetrachloride, um, two moles per minute of elemental silicon are reacted with chlorine gas. So that's what this uh, equation is telling us. Uh, what is the heat generated in one minute by this process? And uh, how much heat is generated in one hour? And uh, one question I had is, well, why would I even be wanting to make this stuff? It's uh, kind of interesting, silicon tetrachloride. Uh, one application is actually smoke screens. And uh, so this is a real world uh, application for sure. Smoke screens are used a lot, um, particularly by the military. Um, anyway, so if you're in a plant making this stuff, uh, one thing that you may want to think about is uh, how hot is it? And uh, before we go and work out the problem, uh, let's kind of think about some other things. Um, one thing we're going to use to work the problem out is the heat of formation. Uh, if you notice on that chemical equation, uh, you had silicon and chlorine, so the heats of formation are going to be zero. Um, so we don't have to worry about them. All we have to do is worry about the heat of formation for our silicon tetrachloride, uh, which is given by this value, and uh, how much and for how long are two other things. So our basis was two moles per minute. And that helps us answer the questions. Um, so how much heat generated per minute, how much heat generated in an hour. And uh, so we're going to go work this problem out. Uh, but first, kind of uh, think about these tidbits. Um, so you want to remember enthalpy is an extensive property. Um, the heat depends on how much there is. If a rate is involved, it will also depend on time. So this problem, we're dealing with uh, two moles per minute. And they want to know how much heat is generated in a minute and then how much heat is generated per hour. And uh, kind of ask yourself uh, this question here, will you have a problem heating or cooling your plant? So um, heating or cooling is uh, kind of interesting. So if we have an endothermic process, uh, we want to worry about keeping our, our employees warm. If we have an exothermic process, we want to worry about uh, keeping our employees cool. Um, you've seen this slide, it was just flipped, so it used to say 
Um, tidbits about heat of formation, same is true about heats of reaction. Now we're dealing with heats of reaction, same is true of heats of formation. Um, if the value is positive, the uh, process is endothermic, that means it takes energy from the surroundings. If it's negative, it's exothermic, that means it's giving energy away. Um, at low temperatures, um, sorry, at low pressures, the uh, heat of formation or reaction is, is independent of pressure. And uh, the amount is, um, oh goodness gracious, I'm missing part of this slide, but the amount of the heat of reaction or formation is dependent on um, how much of uh, the substance we have, basically. And uh, the standard heats of reaction are taken at uh, STP. All right, so we're taking a look at this problem. We, we're worried about how much heat we're generating uh, when we're producing uh, silicon tetrachloride. And so we had uh, silicon, and this is in the solid, solid state, uh, plus, it was already balanced for us, uh, plus two times chlorine, and it was Cl2, so it was a molecule in the uh, gaseous form. Um, goes to silicon tetrachloride. So this is the chemical equation we're, uh, we're working with. We were told that um, it's two moles per minute of silicon. And so this is our basis. This ends up being our basis. So we know we're going to solve this with Hess's law. And so we just calculate the heat of reaction. And again, this is the sum of delta H formation for the products minus the uh, sum of the delta H or heat of formation of the reactants. And um, what's interesting, so we know that we're getting two moles per minute, and so we can multiply everything by two, basically. And um, so we know that this is going to be um, twice the heat of formation for um, silicon tetrachloride. I um, mean, you know, these are going to be zero. This is going to be um, multiplied by two. And we were given the value um, in the previous sequence, so we know that heat of formation of uh, silicon at, um, I believe it was 800K, was um, negative um, 660,479. And so we know we're gonna have two moles per minute uh, because of the chemical equation. So this is two, this ends up being four this ends up being two. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll work out the whole thing. So products, um, silicon tetrachloride, so the heat of reaction equals two times negative six, six, zero, four, seven, nine joules. Um, we know moles per minute and so I can put this in a minute somewhere. Uh, we'll just remember that for later. Um, minus, so it would have been, um, but this is also zero. So two times zero plus, this is gonna end up being four. Four times zero. All right. And so I'm being rough sloppy with the units, and I'm sorry, but I'll write it out um, here at the end. So the uh, heat of reaction um, equals 130, oops, sorry about that, 132 joules per minute. Uh, they want to know how much heat um, is going to come out in an hour, okay? And so one, three, 
60 in one hour and so that equals to that leads to I've got a big number um it's negative This is kind of a lot of heat, and it's a big number, and I got 7.9 times 10 to the 7, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, times 10 to 7 joules per hour. And that's quite a bit of heat, because uh, if you remember, negative means exothermic. So you think of this chemical processing plant, you know, making this silicon tetrachloride for a smoke screen or whatever. Um, you know, they have to really think about cooling. And uh, so since, again, let's kind of back up. Since this is the basis um, you're getting two moles per minute, so there's a one to two ratio here and a one to one ratio here. So two moles of silicon, 400 moles of, of uh, chlorine, and uh, two moles of silicon uh, tetrachloride, which is how we you know, multiply this two here. Oh my! It's the end of the lecture. If you have any questions, you can email me at droberson at utep.edu.